to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, hello there and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, the sleep-deprived Cool Dude Clem. Okay, so, in this video, I'm going to be continuing working on the power supply for the computer's audio. Now, just to recap, I have an issue with my computer's audio, there's a lot of noise. And more than one of you commented in, suggesting that I shouldn't power everything off the computer's PSU. Because I've got my amplifier powered off the computer's PSU, because that runs on 12 volts. And I've got a couple of other things connected to the computer, which are also running off the computer's PSU. So what I'm making here is a power supply with isolated outputs for each device. So. This is the rectifier and regulator board. So I've got this one here, which is going to power the amplifier on 12 volts. This one is going to power the amplifier's mixer, which also runs on 12 volts. And this one is going to run the USB audio device, which runs on 5 volts. Now, I really wanted to use this transformer because it's a really nice transformer and it's got mounting brackets and everything, but it turned out to be unusable, so I've decided to do a little bit of a modification to this. So, on closer inspection of the transformer, I've done a little bit of rewiring. I've taken the 36 volt winding off the pegs here, so these are just now flapping around in the breeze. And there was a center tapped winding here, which was made out of two separate windings connected together. So I've separated those. So now one winding is connected to this pin and this pin, you can see that with the red wire there, and the other winding is connected to this pin and this pin, which is the flesh coloured winding. So I've got two separate 12 volt outputs. Okay, it's taken several hours, but I finally found the camera's charger so I can run it off the mains now. Because the battery in this camera lasts like two tenths of a femtosecond and I have to recharge it again. But anyway, here's the transformer that I'm going to use. So, yeah. Make sure it's on AC. Let's measure the voltages coming out. Try not to short anything. Can you see the meter? Might be better, wouldn't it? Okay, so we've got 12.6 volts coming out of that winding. And now let's measure this one, hopefully without shorting anything. and about 12.7 coming out of that winding. Now that's a little bit low for what I want because you know I want to regulate this down to 12 volts DC. But here's the thing. This transformer is outputting about 12.6 volts. Okay. Now to find out what that would be when it's rectified to DC, we just multiply that by about 1.41. And we've got about 17 volts there. Then we take into consideration the voltage drop across the diodes. So minus about 1.2 because it's going, going through two diodes at any given time. And we're left with a quite reasonable 16.5 volts, so there's still a little bit of headroom there. Not much, not as much as I would want, but it's there. And also there's a winding here that gives about 4.5, and it would help if that was in the camera. There's also a winding here that gives about 4.5 volts, so if the devices connected to this transformer pull the voltage down too much, or at least if the amplifier pulls it down too much, I can just connect one of these windings in series with this winding and have a little bit more voltage to play with. You know, a little bit more headroom. So that transformer is going to power the amplifier and the amplifier's mixer. And this transformer is going to power the USB audio device. I haven't measured the output of this transformer, but I think it's going to be about 9 volts or something like that. So. 
I'm just gonna give this a little test and see what we get. Nine volts should give us plenty of headroom when rectifying it down to five volts. So that'll be about, I don't know. Let's see what we got. 12.7 volts, so that's a little bit more than I thought. You know, if that was a nine volt transformer, yeah, that would have given us about 11.4 volts when rectified. So, I think the next thing to do is make the circuit that's going to apply power to these transformers when the computer turns on. I think it's about time to start wiring things up. So, I've got my relay here with the two diodes. I've already put those on there. So what I need to do now is I need to take a live wire. This obviously isn't a live wire at the moment, but it's brown. So, it's going to carry the live part of the mains. Connect that to one of the relay pins. Then connect the other relay pin to the live wire on the transformer. And then the neutral is just going to go to the, to the neutral. Like this. Oh no, is she cooking my pizza? I was going to do that. She's going to do it all wrong. So the next thing to do is connect this up to the transformers. Well, at least I've got a couple of wires on this one, but I'm going to have to put a few wires onto this one. Okay, so the two transformers are now wired up. And I put the relay in this protective little um, thing, so there's no exposed mains wires anymore. The thing that remains to do now is to put wires on the other end of this thing and then see if it works. But before I solder these onto the board, I need to find out which of these wires goes to the barrel and which of these wires goes to the tip. Because the thing I want to plug this into is tip positive, so, you know, the little bit in the middle, that's the positive. So I need to know which wire is which. Now some, some of these, the stripe wire is the barrel, some of them, the stripe wire is the tip. There's no real way to know. So, what I'm going to do is I've got my faulty meter here, I'm going to put one clip onto the barrel. If it will just go on there, like so. Now I've got this onto a continuity buzzer, so I can find out which of these two wires goes to the barrel. So, let's test the stripe wire. No beep. Alright, let's test the wire without a stripe. And there's our beep. Okay. So the wire without the stripe on it goes to the barrel, and the wire with the strip on it goes to the tip. Right, well the build is nearing completion now. I just need to shake out any loose wires or pieces of solder that may have that may short anything out, because we don't want that. I've attached the output leads. And I've trimmed off the excess that I'm not using. And I've also put a heatsink on this voltage regulator here, because this one is going to be taking about 16 volts and stepping it down to 5 volts. And although what that's powering is going to draw bugger all current, that's still quite a significant voltage drop. So yeah, I want to make sure that doesn't overheat. This one in the middle is only going to be taking 16 volts and stepping it down to 12 volts. And again, the thing that's connected to is going to pull bugger all current. This one, on the other hand, again, is going to be taking 16 volts and stepping it down to 12. But this is going to have more of a load on it, so bigger heatsink. Now, the only thing I am worried about is whether that's going to be enough headroom, because once the thing starts going, it might pull the voltage from the transformer down a little bit. But if it does, if it does pull the voltage down too far, I've got an extra 4.5 volts right here. So, that's not going to be a problem. But what we need to do now is turn this on and make sure it works. Okay, so we've got two 12 volt outputs here and one 5 volt output that I'm going to measure right now. So this is all plugged in. I have an external supply to trigger the relay, so let's turn it on and see what we get. Oh, that would help if the meter was on voltage instead of ohms. Okay, yeah, we got 4.97 volts coming out of there, so that's working. Right, so time to test the 12 volt outputs, so putting the meters negative on the barrel. Now, I don't quite know how I'm going to measure the tip, so I'm just going to try and hold it in there and see if we're getting the voltage we need. Yep. 
Okay, we've got 11.87 volts, so, yep, we know that regulator's working. Now to test the other 12 volt outputs, which is this one. Make sure that's working. And indeed it is, and we have the correct polarity. So, so far so good. So how are we going to power that USB sound device from external power then? Well, this is my solution. Get a USB extension cord. Just any old cheap USB extension cord. So if this thing goes into the computer, this thing goes to the USB sound device. Now what we need to do, we need to get rid of this power connection, this power wire, whatever you want to call it, because we're not going to be using that, and we don't want to put the 5 volts into the computer. We don't want the two power supplies fighting each other and something blowing up. Now the two data wires and the black wire still need to be connected so I'm just gonna go and do that. So now that's done all that's left to do is to connect the power supply to the USB cable so a ground wire goes to the USB's ground wire like so And then the power wire goes to the red one. Like so. Let me just solder that in place. Like this. I've also added a capacitor there just to smooth things out. Doesn't need to be anything particularly large. 100 microfarad should do the job. So, just gonna tape this all up and we should be good to go. Just for a control here, before I install the new power supply, let's just get a baseline of the, um, or whatever it is, of the noise that we have currently. Okay. So remember that. Now I'm going to install a new power supply. Well, here it is, mounted onto the other side of the desk here. And yes, I know it doesn't look very good, but, you know, it's going to be out of sight, so don't really need to make it look pretty. So I think the next thing to do is, you know, hook it up to the mains and see if it works. Right, well, I'm putting the bench back on now. And you'd never know that there's a rather ugly piece of electronics work under there. Well then, this is the bit where it could all go wrong. So I'm going to turn on the computer. I have the relay click. That's a good thing. Power's come on to the thing. Let's see if the sound is working. Check how quickly my computer boots. See, we're already into Windows 10. And in a few seconds, we'll be at the desktop. Yeah. And this isn't even using a solid-state drive. Yep, yeah, using the old mechanical hard drives. Well, okay, let's um, all right, let's just load up my plug tracker. Let's see if we can find. Has this got some sound? All right, I'll just load in one of my things. Oh, this could take a while, because this is using some pretty big VSTs. If this works, I can release my Crystal Kingdom Dizzy OST album that I've done. Because I'll be able to record it with good sound quality. Now, I don't know why this is taking so long. Usually doesn't take this long to load. Okay, let's see if we got sound. Yes, we've got sound. Oh, no, wait, we don't have sound. I was just expecting it to work. Do we have sound on the other thing?
Well, I know this thing is getting power because... Well, it works, so... I don't want my boring old subscriptions. I want something better to watch. Alright, Stanley Parable, let's see that. Again, I'm not getting any sound. Is it actually playing? I don't know if that means it is playing or pressed to play. Oh, I don't. I've got absolutely no idea what's going on here. The other one was showing stuff on the meter, I think, when this was playing. Oh, that's not even doing anything now. I don't quite know what's going on here. Okay, so I know the amplifier part of my amplifier is getting power, but maybe the mixer isn't getting power. This thing does have rather a thick middle to it, so maybe that's just not connecting. I'll try that with a different plug, see if that works. Okay, that little problem solved. It was just the mixer not getting power. Now it's all working. I'm just trying to find something to watch. Oh, look, there's a really old cassette master video there. Oh, yeah. oh don't buy Crosley because they're absolutely pieces of junk. Okay, what you're looking at is one of these modern That's working. retro or reproduction, whatever term you choose to use. Also, Modplug Tracker, which uses the USB sound device, that's working. So, yeah, everything seems good. But there's one more test I need to do. Now, remember how the noise problem was before? Okay. Well, now I'm going to turn the volume all the way up again, and let's see if it's helped. Silent. Well, it's... Well, it's almost silent. I'd say that's helped a lot. It's not perfect. But I'd say that's like maybe ten times less than it was before. So, so yes, it's a success. And until next time, I'll just point at the thing. Until next time, goodbye.